When is the next video on the DeLorean? Did you ever find batteries for the space van? Is the CL65 still broken? Does the SVT Lightning have an engine? Whatever happened to the Fox Body Mustang? Should you put ketchup on a hot dog? Who has the best deep dish pizza? And do you say soda or pop? All of these questions and much more will be answered in this video. So if you guys have wanted an update on one of my cars, even some of my forgotten projects, this is the video for you. It's all about cars and it starts with something, well, that's not a car at all. And it's called Green Ray. So this is a go-kart that my kids and I built. Now the deal was that I'd split the cost of the go-kart with them, so they needed to earn some cash. We found a lawnmower that someone threw out in the alley because it didn't run, and we got to work making sure it had spark. Okay, next we're gonna check the prime to see if it's squirting fuel into the carburetor. After figuring out that it had no fuel flow, we let some sea foam sit in the float and the tank. And we got some prime. And that fixed it. After getting it to run and testing it out, we detailed it and sold it for $120. With that money and some help from dad, we found a go-kart frame in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and of course picked it up with the LSC Express van. The go-kart was sitting forever, so we had to fix the brakes, the steering, the throttle cable, and more, and then install a brand spanking new engine. Okay, now my assistant will get out this engine for me. Oh, she's a beauty. Okay, now my assistant will install the engine. After my son installed the new torque converter, it was time for its first start and first drive. Now naturally we did make and edit a full video, but that one's just for the family. Onto the cars, Buick, Grand National. This has been my go-to car show, cruise night, drive to work to go work on the DeLorean car. I just, I use it all the time. Grocery stores, it's got a gigantic trunk. It fits five so I can actually kind of cruise around with the family just locally to shows and stuff like that. I love this car. It's one of my favorite projects on the channel. I'm, I'm probably gonna drive it today. There's nothing wrong with it. It just keeps running well and, and yeah, it doesn't disappoint at all. So the GN is good. We finished this project uh, a few months ago and I've just been enjoying it. Something that's almost done is the McLaren, although I still drive this, it doesn't really need much. It's got a tiny little weep from the water pump and the front brakes are getting low. But other than that, the McLaren is good to go. I will be fixing those two items and then retuning it at Cannonball Garage because the tune on this car is a little janky. The dyno graph was, yeah, it wasn't the best. But it definitely sounded cool. So unlike the Grand National, which I'll probably keep forever, uh, the McLaren, I don't think so. I mean, I really like the car, don't get me wrong, but I will eventually sell this. It may actually be this year once I'm done with everything, but uh, I wanna drive it a little bit longer here at the end of the summer, and then, I'll, and then I'll move on. So not only are you gonna get updated on all of the cars in this video, but I'm gonna let you know which ones I'm selling because I gotta sell a lot of cars. I have way too many, no room. Oh, and this is what's actually in my garage if I'm not filming an update video. Lots of stuff. And yes, I made this thing go faster. Let me, I just show you guys this trick, hang on. I swear this isn't in the instructions at all. If you guys have one of these power wheels, check this out. See this screw right here that I've kind of taken out? This used to go all the way in. And I found online that if you just take it out or just remove it slightly, you get a whole nother gear. So we're in gear right here, then you have another and another. You only had two from the factory. And the speed that you've unlocked is literally double. It's, it's twice as fast as it comes, you know, just right out of the box. It's pretty cool. I've also heard you can put different batteries in these, but let me know in the comments. Some people say you can put like big drill batteries in here or something and make it faster. I, I don't know, let me know. Next we have an airplane that always ruins my scenes when I film at home. That's a Boeing 747 with 8,000 horsepower, I don't know. Next with my cars is the C63 AMG. This is definitely one of my favorite cars in the fleet. This thing is so, so cool. I've had other C63s, but this two-door facelift 507 edition or Edition 507, whatever they call it. I love it. It's so cool and I find myself driving it all the time. My wife likes it. She actually wants this car. She like literally wants it as her cool car 
and uh, I might have to give it to her, but I said only after we supercharge it. Paid $27,000 for this. I'm not selling it. I love it, and it's getting a supercharger. It's gonna have a bajillion horsepower, and then, you know, my wife's gonna drive it. Because your wife needs to have like 800 horsepower cars. Speaking of my wife, this is her 640 crank horsepower 2015 Cadillac Escalade Platinum. And honestly, there's not much to say about this truck, but in a really good way. It's solid. It's been very reliable. It's got almost 100,000 miles. I bought it at 81,000. I supercharged it at 81,000, and it's been rock solid ever since. It is a complete dig monster. Trackhawks are fast. This thing is a beast. 13.2 in the quarter mile. Anyway, no plans on getting rid of the Escalade. This is our kid hauler, our family vacation trip, my wife's daily driver. It's a lot of things and we love it. Well, I was gonna drive the C63 to the shop, but it is, it's gonna be a nice day. So do we take the Grand National, the McLaren? Which one would you guys take, Grand National or McLaren? This is tough. Um, I really like you, but I'm driving you. It's pretty early in the morning, so we get two cold starts. Listen to this. Here. Hang on, I gotta tell you guys about a crazy sale that I'm having on legitstreetcars.com, link down below. We're doing 20% off of all of the detailing products and I haven't really shown you guys this much yet but I'm super proud of it. This is a big, gigantic drying towel and it's amazing. All right, we're gonna get the TA nice and wet. And guys, check this out. One swipe and it is completely dry. There is no water on here. It's totally 100% dry. This gigantic drying towel is something that I worked on for about a year. I had tried quite a few of these. I just wasn't happy with them. And this, this is the one, it's insane. You can dry an entire car in about two minutes. Actually, you could dry two or three cars. This thing is so absorbent. And then you can reuse it over and over again for years to come, you just throw it in the washer machine. It's really nice and easy. I can't explain to you how much I love this drying towel. It's 20% off right now. Along with all the other detailing products, you guys already know how awesome the Legit Street Cars Foam Cannon is. We also have in stock the three pack of the Legit Street Cars brushes. Get a soft, medium, and coarse so you can clean wheels, interiors, whatever you need. We also have the Legit Street Cars clay mitts. So don't bother clay barring your car. You can use one of these literally over and over again for years and it'll take anything that's embedded in the clear coat right out. You can do the whole car in about 15 minutes. I'm not gonna put this back in stock. That's now a Christmas gift. We of course have our really plush wash mitts. We have the yellow and black microfibers. These are larger than most all of the competitors and much, much more. As you can see, my storage is loaded up with merch and products and 15 passenger van seats. And you guys have been killing it with the legit street cars merch. So we're kind of running a little bit low there. We have Grand National posters, hoodies, t-shirts, you name it. And we fulfill and ship everything in-house right here from legit street quarters. Mac is doing this almost every single morning, getting you guys your products and your merch on time. So check it out, link down below, 20% off. So take advantage, enjoy your products, tag Legit Street Cars on Facebook and on Instagram with pictures of you guys using this stuff or wearing it all. All right, hang on, hang on. Before we go outside, I can't leave you guys hanging on the DeLorean. I know a lot of you guys are wondering, Alex, why don't you have a DeLorean video out this week? Well, the simple answer to that is the DeLorean has required an insane amount of work and my plan has been to get out one long video on its complete cosmetic restoration. And that's what I'm working on, but I swear, I'll put like eight, 10 hours into the car in one day and I'll step away and be like, what did I do? It doesn't look like it did a lot, but I know I worked hard. It's like every little nut and bolt. I've been cleaning, I've been painting, just, I'm just going to town because I'm gonna keep this thing forever. So instead of rushing out little bits and pieces, I'm gonna make one long, awesome DeLorean restoration video. So here it is, I'm, I'm literally working on it right now. I don't wanna show you guys too much, but kinda of looks the same as it did in the last video, but trust me, uh, I think about 80 hours have been put into this car the way it sits right now. I'll give you the fastest teaser in the world. 
There we go. Oh, and Max, my editor, has been off work to spend time with his new beautiful baby girl, and then he got COVID, so congrats to Max and his wife, and get better, dude, I miss you. Another one you guys ask about all the time, and for good reason, is the True Blue Metallic 2002 SVT Lightning. They only made about a thousand in this color. I love this truck. Okay, the plates aren't on right now, but when you see the LSC license plates, you know that vehicle is around for the long haul, and I do have the LSC SVT license plate. So I am keeping this. It is a very important truck for me, but like I've told you guys before, the engine's just been hung up. I was fixated on having the original engine uh, rebuilt. So I just sent it to a machine shop and then I was gonna build it here. One machine shop held it up for about four months. Then I finally just had to go there and pick it up. They lost so many important parts, brand new parts, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, if not thousands. Um, and then some factory parts that I had to order from Ford. It was a big, big mess. So now it's at another machine shop. They've had it for like another four months. And after like two months, they're like, hey, we're missing these parts. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me that? Like, I just gave them everything at once. It's been a machine shop nightmare. Part of me just really wants to just go buy a complete engine and slap it in here. But that's where it's at. That's where it's at. I just don't have an engine for it. I, I will get, I'll get there eventually. Like, it should be done this year. Let's just say that. I did have a video on the CL65 recently. I was chasing a high intake air temperature issue, and now I'm chasing a whole nother issue. I've worked on this car for probably about an entire week without really anything to show you guys because the video is not done because I haven't figured out the issue. So that is what happens sometimes. I will sit here and work on cars for days and essentially have nothing to show for it because I'm not the type of channel that just you know, gives you quick little, you know, 10, 15 minute videos where we don't really get anywhere or accomplish anything. I like to have a true beginning with a plan of what we're doing, a middle body of the video, and then a proper ending where we have a result or some kind of conclusion. I, I just don't have that on this and that's not the content I put out. So I work on it all the time and when I get somewhere, trust me, I will have a video out, but this thing is, it's once again, just beating me up. I've never been so beat down and let down by a car in my entire life, but I am determined. I'm not going to ever give up on the CL65. It will be ripping it on the dyno with the bigger turbos, the ported heads, the bigger fuel system, all the stuff that I've done. We will put it to the test and get some numbers and just enjoy this car. It is a, it's a nice car. I still like the CL, okay? You ever known someone to be treated so bad by somebody and then they continue to stick with them forever and ever and ever for some reason? It's kind of like that. It's like a bad relationship. On to a much more happy update, my space van. So if you guys saw the last video, I had uh, some bad cells. I took out one of the modules and yeah, I ran into an issue where I needed to find these cells which are unobtainium. You can't find them anywhere, but I found a guy on Craigslist who at first wasn't responding to me and then he finally did. So I'm in talks with this guy to get these batteries. He still has them, the, well actually the cells, uh, and he's got a lot of them. So they're in California, it's kind of hard to ship, but I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to get these cells. We're gonna get this thing back on the road. Uh, Josh, who had come out here in the last video is gonna come back out and help me. And uh, yeah, the space van will live. I definitely plan on fixing this and then getting rid of it. The old CEO wants to buy this, like he's adamant. Like I've gotten messages where he's like, when does the space van go back to its rightful owner? Like he really wants this thing back. I wanted to donate it to a school or a museum. So I got to figure out a good happy medium here because I want to do something charitable uh, with this van. My intentions are not to just sell it back to the CEO and make a ton of money. I want to do something good with the space van. So that's what I'm going to do as soon as I get it fixed, which hopefully will be soon. This is a blast from the past. Well, I mean, it's a 93, so it's definitely a blast from the past, but it's not really a blast from too far back in the past as far as my channel goes because I got this car last year and, and I finished it last year. Yeah, I think it was technically 2022. Uh, the C4 has been finished for a long, long time, but Pro Charger was so happy to see their really old Pro Charger system still kicking on this car. This was one of the first LT1 Corvette Pro Chargers. They run them by the serial number and they have the history behind it. Um, so they, they were coming out. Now we finally have a date in the calendar, it's in September 2023. Pro Charger is going to come out with a brand new Pro Charger. We're going to exchange it out, um, and and then I'm going to put it on a dyno and tune it, and then that's pretty much it. I, I want to surprise the old owner, Marlin, 
which I don't think he really watches the video, so I'm not ruining the surprise right now. Um, but I just want to pull up to his house and show him his baby. He nicknamed it Ruby. Uh, he had his Harley Davidson painted the exact same ruby red color. So seems like a really cool guy. I can't wait to show him the car. So C4 is still around, but after that whole thing, uh, I do plan on selling this car. It's not like a forever car. So uh, yeah, probably fall-ish, I'll, I'll be selling the C4 Corvette. Next, we have the Eclipse GSX. Uh, I'm about probably 50% done with a video on this car. As you can see, the turbo is off. I ran into an issue with this car. There's a part on here that is completely broken, but I'm working on getting a new one, and then we'll put this back together. So the next video on this one is going to be a bigger turbocharger, a bigger fuel system, a base tune, and, and hopefully this thing will be ripping soon. And I was even considering maybe just getting this wrapped. I might bring it over by Chicago Auto Pros. I was gonna do a full paint job, which I may do eventually, uh, but right now, really what's happened with this car is clear coat failure but in a good way like it's just gone like it's basically just a nice base coat ready for a wrap uh so yeah i'm thinking about getting a wrap let me know what color you guys would like to see this car it's going to get lowered with some cool wheels as well but i think i should be able to have this done in 2023 as well because i'm not touching the engine or drivetrain it's already got a nice clutch it's got a nice exhaust it's got a good engine so i think i'm going to run with basically a full bolt-on e85 car uh, that is wrapped we'll spiff up the interior lowered wheels we should be good oh and this got the lsc dsm plate so yeah i'm pretty much keeping this forever oh and the other dsm that was on my channel was not my car it was not my build so that one is gone forever so I'll be focusing all of my DSM energy on this, the LSC DSM. Something I'm definitely not keeping forever is the LS swapped 124 Mercedes. I actually had a trade deal going on this. Really nice guy in Colorado. He was gonna trade me a 2014 435 XI, like a really nice M competition package or whatever. Uh, we were gonna do it. We were gonna meet halfway and do the trade, but then he found out that Colorado emissions like just now changed. And he said that this would need to be fully inspected and he doesn't think it would pass emissions. So, you know, he, he couldn't make the deal, which was unfortunate. I really, really wanted that car. I thought it was a cool trade. Um, so yeah, I know a lot of you guys emailed me about this. I've been offered uh, $15,000, like probably 10 times. And I've gotten about five offers at $16,000. So I think that's right around what the car's worth. So I could easily sell it and make room in my shop. I really should just sell it, but I really wanna do the trade thing where I keep on trading up. Uh, that was kind of the theme behind the last video on this car, so I, I really wanna do that. So if you guys do have any kind of cool, interesting trade uh, that's you know worth you know about 16,000, send me an email, legitstreetcars at gmail.com. Couple of cars that I definitely am selling with the Space Fan are the clay molds, and here is my Turbo Trans Am. I've had it for 20 years, never selling it. Uh, it's in every one of my update videos saying the same thing. 1,000 horsepower, nine-second streetcar with air conditioning. I bought it when I was 18 years old. It had, I think, about 12,000 miles. This was my motivation after I graduated high school to do well in tech school. So I graduated high school. Two weeks later, I was in Laramie, Wyoming at Wyo Tech. For tech school, I signed up for a 12-month program, and I knew that if I did well at the end of the 12 months, I would get a good job and live my dream. So I did that. I got like straight A's at Wyo Tech. They literally called me the overachiever. That was my nickname. I was a huge dork, but I did well. Mercedes hired me three months before I even graduated, and the rest is kind of history. And the whole time I was at that school, because I didn't, I didn't do that well in high school, okay? I just didn't concentrate that much. But the whole time I was at Wyo Tech, I was just dreaming of buying this. I'm like, if I graduate with straight A's, which I had never, never gotten before, and I get a decent job, which I did, Mercedes-Benz of Chicago hired me, I'm buying a Trans Am WS6, my dream car, and I did it. And because of that, I'm, I'm never selling the car. I love it. Outside, I have a bunch of cars as well, and we have a few here as well. So we'll start off with the 1999 SVT Cobra. Back in the day, this was the fastest Cobra in the entire country. It only has 17,000 miles. It's supercharged, it's super built up, and super broken. And it is on my trailer right now, and that does not mean it's going anywhere. In fact, it's quite the opposite. So I actually didn't own the Cobra up until a few months ago. The owner of the car let me know that he wanted to sell it. He had another baby. He just didn't have the funds to put into this car. He had other priorities, which makes sense. So he gave me first dibs, which was really nice because I do think it's a super cool car. When I'm done with it, I do have to give 
him first dibs back, so it'll be like a little circle of high performance. But for now, I own the Cobra. I do have a new engine for it. I have new wheels for it. I'm gonna send the supercharger out to either get rebuilt or replaced. It's a 17,000 mile car, so I'm gonna do a full paint correction, the whole legit street cars detail restoration, and we're gonna bring it back to its heyday. This thing had like 750 wheel horsepower back in the day, and I can't wait to get it back on the road. So the reason I haven't touched the Cobra yet is because I wanna do the Lightning first. I've had that car much longer, and if I'm gonna pick which SVT is gonna run first, it's it's gotta be my Lightning. It'd just be rude of me not to. So I will get to this. I also can't have two lifts down at the same time. Uh, so I will do like, I think, like a Ford month where for like one month I just bury myself in the shop and we knock out all the Fords. I mean the two blown up engine SVTs uh, and just, and just you know, get them running again. So anyway, the SVT's mine, it's sticking around and I can't wait for it to drive again. I wanna feel some Cobra power. Now in the meantime, I can feel the power of my twin turbo 5.0 Coyote Mustang. This is my wife's 2011 California Special. It's got almost 600 wheel very, very nice car. We did the big Brembo brakes, different wheels on it. So it's my wife's Mustang, but my wife doesn't really drive it. I never drive it. And the thing just kind of sits around, which is a shame. Someone should be enjoying this Mustang. So I do think I'm gonna sell this twin turbo Mustang. I have someone that wants to do a trade with me, so I don't know if I'll do that, but I think I kind of just rather sell it and just make room. Yeah, it's a very tame, it's not that loud. It's just, it's just nice. It's got that classic Coyote sound. It's a twin turbo car, so obviously the exhaust is done up front, but then it's got a full Bassani exhaust, I believe is what this is. Yeah, Bassani exhaust, really, really nice. This one might be a little bit of a shocker to you all, um, but my daily driver CTSV wagon, guys, I think I'm gonna sell it before the winter. So I bought this 2011 CTSV from Tyler Hoover of Hoovy's Garage. Uh, drove it back from Kansas. It's been phenomenal. Mechanically, it needs absolutely nothing, which is honestly quite weird for a car that I bought, but I've changed the oil on this thing, the differential fluid, that's it. It, it needs nothing. I put like 4,000 miles on it and it's perfect. Cold start on the V wagon. <laughs> I love how this thing sounds. Long tube headers, but it has factory mufflers. So it's just got this awesome gurgle to it. It's not too loud on the highway or anything like that. It kind of idles down and it's fine, but it, it's mean, guys. This is a cool, cool car. But I cannot bring myself to drive this in the winter. After lifting it up at Wizard's Garage and then getting it back at my shop and really taking a good look at it underneath, it's too nice. It was some kind of Southern car, I think, before, but there's no rust on anything, and Chicago will destroy it. And this has been my daily driver. I need a good, reliable daily driver, and this has been it. But if I can't drive this all year round, plus it's rear wheel drive, so it's not the best in the snow, Unfortunately, I just don't have much of a use for it. It's a really cool car, don't get me wrong, but I already have a really fast wagon in my E55, the Whipple supercharged E55. Um, so as much as I'd like to keep this, I just don't have unlimited room. It's gonna sit around a lot if it's not my real daily and I just don't wanna destroy it. So uh, I do think I'm gonna sell this. Even with the rebuilt title, these wagons are selling in like the low 40s, something like that. And with clean titles, they're in the 50s. And then if you have a manual, they're in like the 60s and 70s, it's insane. Um, so I wanna clean this one up a little bit. It's got a little crack in the front bumper. So I wanna fix up a few things and I'm still gonna continue to drive it here for a little while, but I will eventually be listing the CTSV wagon, unfortunately. And then one other thing that I just can't get over is I like the pano roof that was available on these. This one doesn't have it, it's a slick top and some people really like that, and especially enthusiast guys. But you know, if I'm being honest with you guys, I, I like having some sort of glass roof opening and that's always kind of bothered me with this car that it doesn't have that. So just remember, just, just buy what you want. Don't worry about what anyone says and, and be happy. And in this case, you know, that combined with how nice it is underneath and not being the best vehicle in the snow, it's just, it just, equates to me parting ways with the CTSV. But I will get another LSA supercharged car or LS9 supercharged car at some point. Phenomenal engine. The Caprice is definitely a fan favorite and an, an Alex favorite as well. I've had this thing for about three years now. It was a Florida police car with 82,000 miles, but it had idled for the equivalent of like 18 months or something like that. Crazy amount of idle hours. I dropped the entire engine, ripped it all apart, deleted the displacement on demand or active fuel management. I stuck the biggest cam I could find in this guy, long tube headers, torque converter, a different intake, put it on the dyno. It put like 460 down, sounds absolutely 
absolutely amazing. Something else I'm keeping, of course, is my other 2012 Chevy, but this one is my Express 3500, the LSC Express. It's supercharged, it does wicked burnouts. It tows DeLorean, carries parts, picks up go-karts for my kids. I just love this van. I use it a lot, and it sounds pretty good too. Oh, wait a minute, did it fix itself? Hang on a second. that out I'm not exactly sure what happened but anyway that's my 15 passenger van the smell of the 85 in the morning it's a wonderful thing 550 wheel horsepower on this van it's my hauler I've taken it on family road trips I, I, I love my van and yes I'll probably get it painted I put up a poll not too long ago and you guys said yes paint it so I got to figure something out there I don't know if I'm just gonna paint the thing white uh, and just you know keep going with this look or I don't know, if I wanted to do something crazy, I was, I was thinking of maybe lowering the van a little bit and then doing some kind of fun paint job. I, I like going with these wheels right here. I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm torn on whether to just keep it looking like a contractor van or just make it look cool. Let me know in the comments, I have to do something with the paint because I don't want corrosion to start setting in. So it's gonna have to be painted. So do I make it look like a really nice white van or should I do like flames and lower it or, or something? I, I don't know yet. Okay, I can't believe I forgot about the ML55 just sitting out here. I broke this last year during a father and son off-roading trip. I ripped on it for like five hours straight and the transfer case exploded. So this thing, it has literally been sitting here ever since that day, which is coming up to a one year anniversary. Our next off road trip is in about three weeks and I plan on this being there. So I have to get a transfer case, put it in and then go over everything because it's been sitting here for a year. So the ML55 definitely gets used and abused. That is its purpose in life. It cost me 3,800 bucks. Me and my guys at Fluid Motor Union did a bunch of work. It is lifted, 35s. They did a custom bumper for me in the front and in the rear. Uh, I get to take it off-roading and do stuff like this and not care about it at all. And I don't clean it. It just, yeah, it, it's just a very purpose-built off-road. This door handle doesn't work. It's a purpose-built off-road vehicle, and I love it. No real plans on getting rid of this, but if I do, I would just get another off-road vehicle because I absolutely love going off-roading. So there'll be a video on this soon on the whole transfer case thing and hopefully it doesn't break again. But this time I am using my mission trailer and I'm gonna trailer it to the off-road park so I don't have to call AAA again. I had to get this towed like 200 miles back home. But AAA, I mean, it paid for itself in that tow, that's for sure. All right, we're back in the GN. I've just driven about 40 miles away to see another 80s classic. The Fox Body Mustang! She's alive! Kind of. Oh man, this is a cool scene right here. Imagine it's 1986, you get a red light in your Buick Grand National with that. First thing you probably ask is, if it's 1986, why? What, what's up with your car? Looks like it's 30 something years old. Eli, what's up? What up? How you been? <laughs> Good man, nice shirt. Good, thank you. <laughs> Good to see the Fox, dude. What's going on? Well. It's broken again, yeah, isn't it? It's broken it's again. Broken again. Yeah, it's, but, I mean, it wouldn't be a Fox body if it wasn't broken all the time. That's right, that's right. All right, so Eli was supposed to drive this to the shop for the first time really since back in the day, since yeah. it was on the channel. So he was on the way and what happened? Well, I don't know for sure, but I, the two previous times this has happened, like I've stepped on the clutch, I just hear a snap. It's probably the clutch cable. And this yeah. is weird, cause it's like, a, it's a, this one's a BBK clutch cable. So it's supposed to be like a lot more a lot stronger. So if you guys are wondering, after I did four videos on the Fox Body on my channel, uh, Eli took over. It's his car, then this was always the plan that I would get it running, uh, we got it driving, we kind of started a little bit on the detailing and stuff like that, and then you know, his goal is to be a mechanic. He wanted to kind of learn on his own. So I went back to Eli and just give us a few of the things that you've done to this Mustang and some of the things you've learned from the Mustang. 
Well, I mean, I put some headers on, and I, re I, uh, I learned how to dent them so they fit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did that. I resealed the upper and lower intake. Um, new injectors, they were kind of shot. One of the things I kind of learned is you got to be patient with a car that sits for this long, and it, it really does. I mean, Alex told me this. It, it shows you, it'll show you everything that's wrong with it over time. And it wasn't just like a ride off in the sunset, you know. I had to take out the transmission, have that rebuild, and need a new synchros. Cool, so you I get mean, to learn about the clutch and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Can we see these headers? Yeah, dude. <laughs> so my first car was a 1988 Trans Am GTA, but when I went to go look at it, I actually went there to go look at an 85 Mustang with T-tops. It was a red one just like this. Uh, when I got there, the guy's like, I sold that, but I have this GTA. So I originally was going to be a high school kid with a red fox body mustang which, which is you know what you are yeah. well not anymore not anymore not anymore no more high school College but guy. yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right cool man so you got you got the new radiator sweet yeah yeah the other one was clogged and it was starting to overheat so and bbk intake cold air right yep. in the fender yep fender well intake very nice there's an ac line right here i'm pretty sure it's low oh yeah i can line. see that yep yep see that right yeah there yeah you had to dent it um you can't really see it but like one of the header, I think this one below, it's kind of like, it's it's really close to the motor mount and the K-member in general. So I had to dent that to make that fit too. That side was, it was super easy. It's so crazy that these headers are made for a Fox Body Mustang, yet they don't fit really. Fox Body guys, let me know. know, are there different year headers that fit or something like that? I mean, they work, so it's good, but... Anyway, uh, headers, cold air intake, new injectors. As soon as you fix that clutch cable, it should be back on the road. It was driving yeah. pretty good before that, though. Oh, yeah. I mean, cool. it's it's running a little rich, though. It needs a tune, but yeah. other than that, it should be fine. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, it's looking, though. It surges a little bit. Well, it's not doing it. It's doing it a little bit, but... Ah, it's okay. You boy. That makes up for it. Yeah. You put bigger injectors in? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you they're need like, a tune. I think they're Ford Performance 24 pounders. Okay, yeah, you just need a little bit of a tune, that's all. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome, dude. I wish we could drive it. Give it some more. <laughs> I always love the sound of these 5.0s. It's so good. All right, cool. It sounds pretty good. Yeah. Well, thanks, Eli. Yeah, I appreciate you showing us the fox again. Of course, man. And hopefully we will see you soon driving this thing. Yeah, gotta come by. I just got to one of my favorite places of all time, Fluid Motor Union. I'm at Fluid because this is where my E55 AMG wagon is. So this is the Whipple supercharged wagon. Sounds amazing. This thing is super fast now. But I was having an issue where the air filter system, the air intake, was just too restrictive for the supercharger. So if you guys saw the last dyno video, you know we were having issues with that. And so, of course, the guys at Fluid Motor Union are handcrafting a new piece. So this is eventually going to sit right there on the throttle body and replace the silicone right there. Uh, and then we're gonna be running much larger air filters. This is kind of a temporary setup because OJ and I drove this to Indianapolis not too long ago and we just needed something on the car. But they are working on this and their fabrication department is amazing. This is gonna be a custom piece uh, that they might eventually get 3D printed. And then at that point, anyone out there that has a Whipple supercharged M113K in a 211 chassis uh, could buy one. So anyway, that's why it's here. And then after this, we are going to re-dyno tune the car so we don't have any intake issues uh and and that's about it the e55 is essentially done outside of this it's been done for a while i put a lot of miles on this car uh it's my mom's favorite car out of my entire collection <laughs> funny story my mom actually drove this car and saw this car before I ever did. So I bought it out of New Orleans, but I was going to Florida like a month later and my mom was in Florida and she was gonna rent a car. And I'm like, mom, let me just ship you the E55 in Florida. You can just hang on to it. It'll be your rental. It'll be cheaper for me to ship than for you to rent a car for like a week or two. And that's it. So she drove this around, fell in love with it and the rest is history. So that's where the E55 is. Uh, don't ever really plan on selling this car. No way, my boots. I have been missing my boots for months and they're right here in my wagon are you kidding me i went out and bought new ones oh and what's this whoa they didn't tell me about these are these my air filters dude okay i know the guys said that they were going to surprise me eventually with like the completed setup i think i might have 
blown part of the surprise. That's awesome. And I got boots. Oh, and then there's my future Rolls Royce. Just kidding. We are at the Hamilton collection. It's right next to Fluid. Kind of cool. Fluid's always got the coolest car. Look at this, they added another lift in here. Second generation Trans Am, lifted Wrangler, Ferrari, old Buick, NSX, S63, and the one and only OJ Lopez. What's up, Alex? What's how up, you doing? Man? Good, how are you? What do you got going on over here? Well, we're just finishing up a pretty neat exhaust that we designed for the NSX. Um, a lot of those cars, the second gen, have an issue with uh, setting check engine lights when you do performance upgrades to them. Um, and there isn't a whole lot to actually do to those cars, but uh, we've kind of found a way to keep that check engine light from setting. And um, Can we see it, it also makes the car sound <laughs> really cool. So, Oh man, this is awesome. Whoa. The real magic is the, uh, the downpipes. Dude, you guys built this entire thing? Is there okay. anything left from, from the NSX? Pretty much. Uh, we're just doing the whole exhaust. This is quite different than the factory exhaust and quite different than the aftermarket. This guy had a whole um, aftermarket exhaust system installed in the vehicle and he was having all sorts of emissions issues. Um, the thing kind of sounded like a truck too. It didn't sound exotic at all. Um, this is the second one we've done. We kind of came up with a creative solution and maybe uh, your viewers can kind of figure it out from the, from the video. They slow it down and kind of see how what we did there. I, I see yeah. it. I see it. Comment down below. But it's it's all legit now. It, it is. It, yeah. uh, it passes emissions. Great. And uh, it sounds absolutely nuts. Can so, we start it? I think we could. I think we could. It's so weird how these things start up. Oh, quiet mode. Yeah, this is the, uh, we call this the factory mode. Now, these cars have the um, half hybrid so I gotta oh, right. switch it to sport to keep it running. Yeah yeah. And you have the remote there for the exhaust, right? Yeah it's just basically Oh it's uh, the same one like on my van. More or less. Yeah. It's basically a Chevy Express 3500 this is what we have here. Alright. Race mode. Sounds like a race car, but it doesn't like destroy your ears. If you that is beautiful. Could have heard this thing before with an aftermarket exhaust system that he spent a good deal of money on, and now all these systems cost a lot of money. But um, it sounded like a truck. It had no like high pitched tone to it at all. And I don't know if you see those the megaphones that we use. Yeah, like, that really brings out the like top end of this car. Uh, cleans it up a whole bunch while allowing you to, like like I said, these cars are very finicky. If you move anything on the exhaust, you're dealing with not just a check engine light, but as you might know from dealing with uh, Japanese cars, they don't just put on the check engine light, they put on every light. Every the other light, like, so, a, you know, ABS, traction, traction yep. it's so insane. The, this was driving the guy nuts, yep. um, couldn't get it to pass emissions, and I just ran it through, passed emissions, and the uh, car's great. So, OJ, we gotta uh, figure something out with this exhaust. This is just, this will just give you an idea oh, okay. of what I'm working with. They, it's a little, uh, little bouncy there. Little little janky. They just kind of tack welded some straps I think they got from Home Depot on here. Yeah, I like the uh, angle strap. Yeah, it's not the just, best. It just definitely welded. needs the fluid motor union treatment. So I think the next video we're doing possibly on this guy. You know, we couldn't just do something that's been done before. You know, we gotta, yeah. we gotta make this thing sound like the best version of this car. I know these things get all crazy with turbos, but I think we can I think we can do something pretty neat with it. All right, guys, so you heard it. We're going to do something special for the Grand National exhaust system. OJ's got something brewing in his mind. Um, but before that, we're going on a father-son off-road trip in the ML55 that I just showed you. Again? Yes, we are. <laughs> it's a yearly thing. We went last year. He was there when I broke the transfer cases. It was a ton of fun, but we're trailering it this time. Smart move. Smart yeah, move. and he, he might have a little more fun in it if you don't. Yeah, have to. exactly. And then he might bring something too. So Facebook, Instagram at Legit Street Cars and Fluid Motor Union will post up a bunch of pictures on there of the off-road trip and any other cool updates from Fluid. You guys are going to want to check it out. And their YouTube has kicked off. It is amazing. Check it out. Link down below as well. OJ, I will see you soon. More than likely. Yes, that's right, Alex. <laughs> Heading back to Chicago.
This thing sounds good, but it feels like something's holding it back. It needs the OJ treatment, and I can only imagine what he's got brewing in his head for the exhaust on this thing. So we are on the way back to Chicago. Uh, let's head back to Legit Street Quarters. I think I have some other cars maybe to go over really quick that you guys have been asking about. I got to look back at some of the ones we finished and gotten rid of. Oh, and yes, you can put ketchup on your hot dog. It's not allowed technically in Chicago, but I I like ketchup on a hot dog, so I do it. I highly recommend it. Lou Malnati's Deep Dish Pizza is the best pizza in the world. Not sponsored at all. It's just my favorite. And it's pop. It's not soda. It's pop. All right, hang on. I got to be a used car salesman real quick. My buddy Lee stopped in from Scrap Life Garage on YouTube, and uh, I shouldn't be here. You should be here. I should not, but I You am. need a V in your life. A V wagon. A V wagon, of course. A V wagon. So Lee is in Chicago for a few days, and he had given me a little inkling of hope that he might want to buy this. And it is for sale, and it's really, really fast. It's this thing's salvage title, right? It's rebuilt title. It's ah. it's been on the road for years. Rebuilt salvage. I mean, it's basically the same. It was thing, previously right? wrecked, but you know, those are just minor details. Well, you know, I like the cleanest of the clean cars. You know, I don't deal with junk. So yeah, it's, I don't know if it's, this is gonna work it's for very me. very dirty. I haven't washed it in like oh, a month at least. But lots of horsepower. You can fit a lot of salvage rebuild parts in the back and haul them around and. You are a used car sale. I'm no, a used, used car sale. That's okay. right. <laughs> I'll even let you use it for the whole weekend while you're in Chicago. Just take it home for a test drive. I guarantee you'll be signing the papers after a That's weekend a with the V Wagon. Dirty trick. That's a very dirty trick. You are it's a used good, car sale. It's good. For sure. <laughs> but I'll take you up on it for sure. Let's do it. All right, guys. I'm literally scrolling through my phone at all of my videos to see if I've missed anything that I need to update you guys on. I think I've gotten everything. That blue WS6 that was in a couple videos, we sold that a long time ago. The Alpina sold that. C63 engine job, we gave that away, that's gone. Yeah, everything else, everything else is done, guys. So if there's a car that I missed, just go to my playlist and you'll probably see all the videos on it, including the last one where I finished it and told you guys what happened to it. But more often than not, they simply just get sold. That's about it. So anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this update video. I hope it answered all of life's questions. And if it did, give this video a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if for some crazy reason you haven't already. And most importantly, I will see you all in the next video, which should be on the DeLorean, provided nothing holds me back. I don't know. Anyway, have a great one. I'll see you all next time.